Hi there, it's Miracle and long time no video. I finished my traveling for October and also the beginning of November about a week ago, but I didn't have the time to film a video yet. But today I'm here to bring you the first discussion video about the story of the stone read along. And don't worry if you haven't read the book yet, this video will be totally spoiler free because I decided to divide it, the discussion into two parts. So this video will be the spoiler free part and there's a upcoming video with spoilers inside it. So without further ado, let's start the discussion. The Star of the Stone talks about a story about a huge family called the Jia's family. And it happened in a unknown period of Imperial China. Like many other big families, the Jia's family has a lot of people and particularly some outstanding females, including multi-generations. For example, the grandma Jia and some of the mothers in the family, the younger generation, and also like the even younger babies. So the stories are happened around them or happened to the relatives of theirs. And as of the first volume of the book, as you can guess, we are introduced to dozens and dozens of new characters. So it's very easy for us to get lost. Actually, to get lost at the beginning of the book is a feedback that I got the most in the first week of the read along. But I want to tell you that don't worry if you are confused at the beginning of the book, because I found it's totally okay to be lost of all the names and details of the characters, because most of the characters are serving the whole like the big picture of the book and the important people of the book will be mentioned again and again and to remember it so the best way of reading this book especially for the beginning part will be go with the flow and this is a good way that we discussed through our uh, goodreads discussion board and people agree to that and another thing that I pick up a lot in the book is the female representations. Actually, I always had the idea that the female representation in the story of the stone was a good one on the back of my head, but I didn't think about it very much until this time. Maybe because by now I'm more sensitive to this topic, maybe because we are a lot of people mentioned that in our group discussion i feel it particularly this time compared to other classics that we used to read the females are very three-dimensional in the book they each of them have their unique backstories and their own personalities and their stories are very well-rounded they do not exist as the love interest of a male character in fact the book was strongly against the idea that putting females to a position that as a male character's love interest. So it makes the book more modern than its time, which was 1791. However, in 1791, China still was in the hierarchy feudal system, so people's position in the society is highly related to their position to the imperial court. So as in this book, because they all live in this huge family, so their position in the family is directly related to their gender. If you are a female, your position in the family is directly related to your husband's position in the family. So although the book has a lot of feminism concept inside it, it also has a great comparison of the patriarchy society, the real patriarchy society, and also the ideal way that treating people. And also there are a lot of maids who serving the people in Jia's family. And although the Jia's family treated the maids extremely well, especially in that time of China, but the maid's position in their family is also uh, have difference and also related to the people who they serve. And there's a tricky thing because there are so many female characters in the book and it looks like the people who has the most power in the book, especially at the beginning of the book, was the grandma Jia, which is a female. But if you think about it, the reason that she has the ability to be in her position is also related to 
her husband. So despite all the feminism concept in the book, the story of Stone also have a profound description of the patriarchy society at that time, which makes the book very interesting because it has the comparison of the two different worlds. The one world is the outside world, which full of male domination and uh, a lot of, um, as the book suggested, a lot of dirty men in that outside world. And also the another inside world is a world that inside jazz family, uh, which full of the wonderful females and a lot of um, pure and clean souls, as the book suggested. The comparison of the ideal world and also the outside patriarchy world was actually written down in one of the first few chapters as truth becomes fiction when fiction is true, real becomes not real where unreal is real. This is a statement that is very important to this book and it let a lot of people think about if the fictional story in this book are actually true stories that happened to the author's family, which is Cao Xueqin's family. And I think it's all based on your understanding, but it's just a mysteric kind of concept to the book. Another thing that I love a lot about this book was the amount of details it has. Every scene in this book was a beautiful picture. From the outfit to each of the character to their displays in their home, and from the out big ideas of the garden to each of the decorations in the garden, you can enjoy a lot of the details and you can see like how the characters were living at that time. And although they have a lot of details, you do not feel bored when reading it because every detail has a purpose to serve the whole story. They are telling you the family structure, people's different positions in the society, people's relationship with each other, and also the difference of people's personality. So speaking of the character's personality and also some other important events that happened in the first First volume, first volume of the book, I think they deserve their own videos to talk about them. And uh, yeah, this is a conclusion of my general idea of my first volume of the story of the stone. I hope so far you are still enjoying the book. And if you haven't started reading it yet, I highly suggest you to check out our Goodreads discussion group, especially for the first week where you are reading it because I think there are a lot of information that can help you to understand this book. And I just love this book so much and this time around I remembered how I love it before and I think this will be a book that I probably read every year. So if you are participate in the read along, let me know if you have any questions and happy reading. I will be back with my regular contents very soon. See you next time. Bye.